Let's see if we can get through this quick. What do you think, huh, Dozy? Can we get through it quick, Dozer? Do you want to get through it quick? Do you want to get through it quick? What about Gyro, huh? What about Ashley? You want to get through it quick, Ashley? Huh? You guys want to get through it quick? Let's get through it quick. Can you speak? Arf. Arf. Come on, talk. Arf. Who's going to talk? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's analog there, huh? Yeah, that's right. All right. There. We got some waggy tails now. Everybody's happy. Groove. I got my, my fat dashiki going on today. Because as you know, it's all about the comfort on a hot day, right? Big fellas out there, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I promised a, a view at my rack, which sounds kind of kinky, but you know, hey, listen, we're all friends here, right? Hmm? That's right. All right, this is my rack and uh, I promise to look at it. If you ever want something that actually surpasses, can, can surpass vinyl. Um, an old Akai, a Tiak, a Revox, or, whoo, this is a sexual word for me, an old Studer chassis with a custom tube print. Never mind, I ain't going anymore. I'm gonna need to stop this video and go have a session. Anyway, these tapes, some of them are amazing. I mean, amazing. And you have never heard the music like you can hear it this way. It's, they're pretty rare, but you can still get them on eBay. So if you've got an uncle with a big old TAC hanging around and you would really like to absolutely feel the prickly hairs on the back of your neck, clean the tape heads, I'll help you with it. Um, it's amazing, it really is. Uh, moving down, that's a 707 by the way, that's uh, one of the premier pioneer home units. It really wasn't uh, particularly a studio machine, but it was a very, in its day, it's probably 30, 35 years old, in its day it was one of the, one of the really hot, you know, units you could get for the house. I think that thing was like 800 bucks 30 years ago or whatever, so it was a lot of money. Um, moving down. This is my uh, Insignia HD radio. I got this on eBay for like 30 bucks. I, you know, everyone's talking about HD radio and how wonderful it is and blah, 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 blah. And I figured, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. And I'm really not that impressed. They compress the living shit out of everything. Um, this is actually a digital based. So this has an optical cable that goes down here into the Emotiva D to A and I actually do the switching here and then everything comes through the uh, everything comes through the ADCOM on this end. Now the thing I tried because this here, this unit actually has a volume control if you see it says volume 80 that's wide open so anything that comes in comes out. I took the lines off this in my did this is just becoming a problem for me here Yeah, I'm a, I'm a redneck. I'm a redneck. But when we eat them, there's no hormones in our food. And the eggs are stellar. If you like eggs, take one of my eggs. Eat it. You'll never go back to Walmart eggs, I guarantee it. Anyway. Come on, Ashley. Hey, pardon me, you know, but... If you looked at any of my videos, you know I'm not into the editing and all that stuff. It's just, I'm flowing like real. This is something that's cute though. This will give you a, a cute little thing. We've got uh, 19 so far. And uh, I had a really hard time chopping heads when I first did it. We, we got to kill the roosters because they just fight and kill each other. But I needed some more hens. Uh, once our hens stop laying, we do not eat the hens. If the roosters are calm and they do not beat the crap, I don't know if you've ever seen chickens, but some roosters are just pricks, man. They're like, they pimp slap the hens and they never stop. So if they're calm, we allow the roosters to live. Um, chickens, we've got chickens out there that are three years past their laying time, but I feel it, it would be bad karma after they gave us eggs for three years. So I call them retirement chickens anyway. Back to the back to the rack. Uh, this is a my Denon cassette again. That's a rack mount. Um, 
it's not the biggest deal, but it, it, uh, it's got everything that I require. It's a very good one. And uh, I still have a lot of cassettes, and I, I mean, I really don't, I've recorded some stuff for a couple people with it, but I just play my old cassettes with it, and it's a nice, clean, very nice machine. It's got a lot of features on it. Um, I like it a lot. This is a uh, Yamaha integrated amp. This is kind of a redundant piece of equipment. And what I use this for is this drives speakers. That wiring harness right there comes around and goes into the rack. Now, uh, this amplifier here is hooked up to two Minimus 7s that are outside in the barnyard. So that if I plug in the, the B speakers and turn this puppy on, okay, I go down here and it's the record out goes up into this. So, if you watch, all right, now the B and the A's on, I'm just gonna put on the A. And then we'll walk on into here, okay? And you'll see what I got going on in our house. Okay, this is a, a Sonnet system. These were pricey. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to spend the money on these things because they cost a lot of money. When I saw what I could do with it and how it affected everything, um, I had to do it. I mean, there was just it just wasn't going to happen any other way. Um, I got these on sale actually, and I stole the speakers, but the volume control was very expensive. Now if you ever can pick up a set and I'm trying to get the I'm trying to get the cover off here. Come on, baby. Well, I think that's going to have to be another video, guys, because I I just can't get the cover off. Anyway, those speakers they're called Sonnets. They were very expensive. Um and this is the corresponding remote volume control, which I never really trimmed out the framing, but it's just kind of set in there so I can I can slide it out. But I wanted to put the trim around that I never have, and I can control the volume out here. But it always keeps the amplifier in the right capacitance properly loaded. So the amp doesn't change load, but more of the juice goes to these. interesting thing about them, one of the side effects that I didn't realize, um, number one, they're extremely efficient. You don't need a lot of power to drive them. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn this down again, okay? And then, of course, my sequeras are playing the same thing out here. But those are being driven by the creme de la creme. Anyway. I've also got a set over there. If you look right above Gumby's picture, and that's where my name comes from. Oh, shoot, dog on it. There you go. My name comes from my first Sheltie. That's Gumby. He passed. I miss him terribly. That's a picture we had done by a friend of ours, pastels of him. But those are my surrounds for the rear channel of the surrounds in my unfinished train station that I live in, okay? Anyway. So that's this thing's job. I'm going to shut it down now, but this runs the auxiliary speakers. It's a basic amplifier. Um, it has a decent phono section in it. I, I had to try it when I got it. Quite honestly, I like my Pioneer receiver better. It's a pure phono section, so if you're looking at one of these for digital, it's great. For phono, it's okay. It's not great. It's not bad either, but it's just it's good. I'll put it that way. Below that, I've got my uh, Sony Plain Jane. I mean, this is like a $299 unit or whatever. I have a lot of live band stuff way back, um, 22, 25 years ago. 
I recorded a ton of stuff, uh, Hi-Fi VHS, and I still have the tapes, and that's why that's there. It's purely an audio machine. I mean, it will do. I mean, uh, it'll, it'll play tapes. You can watch them. But it's hooked into the system for audio. Um, if you guys look this up, you'll know what this is. Uh, this is one of the original Denons. In uh, 1985, this was a $1,299 unit. And uh, it's unbelievable. That's why I, I've never required a new surround sound. I mean, I don't need that 7.1 stuff. I've got Dolby Pro Logic is good enough for me. I'm not really into the video home theater thing, although it is a home theater, but that's not my main focus. I'm into the music. This is a rack rider. Anybody who plays in a band knows what a rack rider is. If you don't look it up, it's nothing more than a power conditioning block and a convenient outlet spot. And at night, I can turn these lights on so I can see the preamp. Everything's dirty and dusty, pardon me. And uh, that's that thing's job, and it works very well. Uh, honestly, if you're going to save money, a uh, plug strip's fine. You really don't need this. It's just I wanted to have it because I like the lights, and the power conditioning was nice. The Adcom 565, this is probably, uh, as far as a solid-state preamp goes, it's one of the nicest, sweetest phono sections I've ever heard, unless you're getting into a $1,500 to $2,000 phono preamp, uh, you know, a standalone. This has one of the sweetest phono sections I've ever heard in my life. I've had eight different preamps in my system, and I have never found one that beat this. And that includes a Krell, guys. I've had a Krell in here, and... Yes, it was a teeny bit more detailed, but it was also so analytical that it fatigued you, and I just couldn't stand it. Uh, that's a Magnavox to tune broadcast digital television. There's my squeeze box base. This is my Emotiva uh, digital to analog converter. These were on sale up until recently for $199 delivered to your house. It is the bargain of the last 10 years if I have ever bought anything. That was an absolute jaw dropper and an eye opening experience. I never knew what I was missing when I was listening to the digital through this Philips. Um, I had a, a Tascam CDR4U. I liked it. I liked the Philips a little better. It was a little, a uh, little snappier, a little more British sounding. When I plug this thing in, I just, phew, it's awesome, awesome. If I did not have the Lin. I would get rid of everything and I would only go direct from the Emotiva into the amplifiers because when you do that it will make the system will literally bring tears to your eyes uh, in digital mode. The newer recordings that are that are mixed correctly for digital mode, especially the stuff I download, you know, the 192 stuff, unbelievably revealing, natural, non-fatiguing. And yet, I mean, you can tell if the singer has a booger in his nose that night. I mean, it is just breathtaking. Below that, I've got my uh, Samsung DVD player. It's also tied into here, and I have started to actually use this uh, to play back CDs. And there's this new thing they have out now, which is DVD audio, which is also absolutely astounding, I have to say. And I use that for that. There's two space panels and then you've got the uh, 565 mono block and the other 565 mono block uh, if you read the reviews these are amplifiers were built I believe 92 they're designed by Nelson Pass and any of you that recognizes that name should know what that means these were often called the poor man's Krell because between the KSA 250 of the time and these amplifiers Pretty much the only difference was the Krell had a little bit more bass. Oh. And, uh, so, and then of course, to complete my system, I've got the, uh, the Met 7s were, uh, this, this speaker right here, uh, these are custom built. Not custom for me, but these were built by uh, a man named Dick Sequera. And if you've ever heard of the Day Sequera tuner, yeah, that's him, Dick Sequera. Um, these speakers are a 
kind of a strange situation. Um, the thing about these speakers that I'm going to talk about for a second, people have many different reasons. Um, let me see if I can get this thing set up. I lost my, I'm sorry guys, I lost my doggone, uh, the little piece that, that you, uh, that you plug in, you plug it into your, uh, your tripod, you know, um, I lost it, so I set my tripod up to make these videos to do it right, and I can't find it because I have to take the tripod piece off of this thing to get the memory card out of it to upload stuff. Um, the thing about the Sequoia speakers, uh, I had a set of Proact tablets before these, and as far as a small room, the Proax were the best thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, they use them in the studios. A lot of places actually mix with those. And they are just exactly what goes into the back comes out the front. Um, the problem with that is if your equipment has errors in it and it's, it's, uh, it's substandard, the speakers will sound substandard. And that goes anywhere in the chain from the needle through the interconnects, through the preamp. If you've got a noisy pot in there, a bad capacitor, you can hear it through the Proax. They don't veil anything. They don't warm anything up. They're not forgiving. That's probably the best way to put it. They're not forgiving at all. Um, they're a very analytical speaker, but at the same time, they're not real bright. You know, they're, they're, they're sonically the most perfect thing I've ever heard. The problem is they got lost in this big room. This room's 37 by 17, and with 12-foot ceilings, I, there was no base. They just couldn't keep up with it. They were too small. Um, the Proact tablets were about the same size as the Sequoia Met 7, a little bit smaller, but not much. Um, the problem is with the Met 7, you can buy the subwoofers, and you can buy the line source drivers, and when you add those two things to it, the Met 7 becomes the mid-range part of the speaker, basically. That's, that's really what ends up happening. So you've got all this foundation from the subs, so you've, then you've got plenty of bass. It's nice and tight. It's a sealed cabinet. Um, I'm sore right now, so I'm not going to go knock on the, show you what the, what the uh, I'll get into that stuff later about how to tell if a speaker cabinet's built right. You know, you just go up with your knuckle and rap on it. And you can get a pretty good idea uh, if the person who built it knew what they were doing or not, if you know what to listen for right there. I've gone up and um, I've gone to stereo shops and gone and knocked on the side of a speaker and I look at the salesman like, I don't need to listen to this one. <laughs> I've been wrong about that too because some of them don't work that way. Matter of fact, Lynn comes to mind. They had, the, they had one set of small Lins one time and I knocked on the side and I said, this can't sound good, but it did. So it's not always true. Um, anyway, the thing about the Sequera speakers, uh, if you understand what dynamics are, dynamics, is, it's basically, the quickest way I can describe it is it's the ability to go from a very, very quiet passage to a very, very loud passage instantly so that um, the guy goes into a guitar solo, for example, and he doesn't adjust. Nobody in the, in the studio screws with the levels. You're actually hearing what the musician's doing. So they set it, they forget it, and they let the man play, which is what I like more than having them cakewalk every freaking piece of the music and try to go in and digitally masturbate it to, to be loud for FM and all this bullshit. They ruin music that way. If there is no quiet there can't be any loud. If there is no quiet, there cannot be any loud. If you've ever listened to a recording and the whole song is really, really loud, it's not dynamic. You see? You've got to have good equipment to be able to turn it up and have that headroom in the amplifiers. You have to have power on tap to be able to deal with a dynamic song. Um, of course, the classic 20 years ago was Ricky Lee Jones, A Girl at Her Volcano. If you ever see it, it's a little 7-inch uh, EP. 
If you ever see that, buy it, buy it, buy it. If it's $15, buy it. It's very rare now. Uh, she does a song called On the Boardwalk on that. It is one of the most dynamic songs I have ever experienced. And you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's very, very quiet. And when the band hits their groove, it immediately, it's, it's like a bomb goes off. I mean, I just don't know how else to describe it. It's like a bomb goes off. And they get extremely loud. A good system can deal with that. A shitty system can't deal with that. The problem is, is that with these iPods, well, I'm not even going to get into that. Anyway, this video is going to end now because I promised several people I would show them what was in my rack, and I've done that. And uh, please, I've got another video. Uh, if you see something on my channel about a contest, please take a look at that because I have a great idea for the vinyl community. Um, you guys are going to love it, I think. And uh, I will talk about that in another video. So when you see, uh, when you see that uh, video about the contest, um, I'm going to be giving away a complete sound system, hopefully to a young person. But uh, look for the details in the video. Peace out. Keep the needle in the groove, fellas.